Hello, uh, I'm Bartholomew Bland, Executive Director of the Lehman College Art Gallery at the City of University of New York. And I am, I am joined today by Anastasia Samoloiva, um, who is one of the artists in the exhibition Elevations 2020, which is a co-organized exhibition with Lehman College Art Gallery and the Coral Gables Museum. And, and I'm so happy you're with us today, Anastasia. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to talk a little bit about your work in the exhibition. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Um, yeah, looking forward to our conversation. Yes, so I'm a native of South Florida, so I was uh, particularly drawn to your work um, because of uh, the, some of the works are very site specific um, in their locale. I recognize some of the locations um, around South Florida. So maybe you could just give us a little bit of a snapshot about some of the, the images that you've uh, photographed and some of the places you found particularly evocative in, in South Florida. Yeah, so the pieces that were included um, in the exhibition in the Alien Nations show are from my long-term project called Flood Zone. And, uh, you know, it's it's in the name. <laughs> uh, obviously a, a, a top topic right now uh, in all the coastal areas, but particularly in Miami, which is one of the lowest lying on the eastern, on the eastern seaboard. Yes, definitely. Uh, it wasn't really, you know, something I set out to do initially, um, you mentioned that you're a native Floridian. I'm not, you know, I'm an outsider. Uh, and well, you were born in Russia, correct? Born in Russia, yes. Actually, just last week I became a citizen. So speaking of alien nation, I was in my alien resident status for 13 years. And then uh, that, was, uh, that was the day after the inauguration, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. That's, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and so I was coming from, you know, a very different climate, um, well, Russia, and then uh, I lived in uh, the American Midwest for some time, and then Northeast, uh, and so then moving to Florida, um, well, actually, I was always focused on the environment in one way or, or the other, uh, but in Midwest, I focused on industrial agriculture, I made a documentary film on that, um, you know, the subject processed foods, um, it's all about farming, uh, where, where I was. And then in Russia, I studied environmental design, which was predominantly three-dimensional, was actually making sort of practical, like useful spaces for people to occupy, you know, leisure and, and culture and so on. So anyways, long story short, moving to Miami, um, no expectations whatsoever, very different, obviously overwhelming environment, you know, it's, it's sort of hyper stimulating in one way or in the other. <laughs> it is sort of slow. Um, so it's a mix of things. And uh, really the summer, that sort of tropical torpor is, yes. uh, is, yeah. is very. And it's sort of like these cycles of intensity is really interesting. I found it to be um, very interesting in, in that way too. Um, so the tourist season. It sort of never ends, but I guess it, it's like winds down and then hurricane season starts. Yeah. And then <laughs> you're sort of in this permanent state of preparedness for a hurricane or, you know, um, some sort of storm. Um, so flood zone began very speculatively. It was just um, sort of my observations on this place. Um, so it's all about place. And then flood zone only came to be project about two years into weekly, uh, if not daily outings to photograph. And this was uh, my really first foray into observational photography. Before that, it was all studio-based work. Interesting. That's interesting. And so do you find that your flood zone project, I mean, are you very aware of when there are going to be the so-called king tides are going to be uh, in, in season and, and are you scheduling those times to be out and about not, uh, at all. <laughs> not at all i was not now if i need them for something and it's usually you know now the project um that it it took off in such interesting way well with um representational you know, observational photography that's sort of just straight photography um it's interesting how work can travel way beyond the art context you know mm -hmm. it's been predominantly shown since i've always been an artist uh it's been predominantly shown in the art in the art sort of institutions right or galleries but then um 
I'm frequently like solicited for material to illustrate the actual, you know, reports. Right. There's right. A, and a, then a, it a, emerges a, everywhere. You know, it's been published in Spain and then in Germany and whatever Switzerland and like all over Europe. And um, it's really fascinating to see the response and how people say this is not what they imagined at all in Miami mm -hmm. to be. And, and that's what interested me the most initially. It's this sort of um, the dichotomy, you know, that the image that Miami presents and South Florida, and, you know, by extension, um, the sort of tourist paradise. And it's historically been presenting itself that way as this like safe haven for tourism and real estate development. For a century. I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then it emits so much. Yeah. Uh, well, and so I know, I know that you live on Miami Beach. Have you experienced some of this flooding firsthand and uh, around your residence? Yes. And does that feels very much a uh, um, uh, a reality of, of day to day life. I know it's your son who's pictured in one of the images that's in the Alien Nation. Yes, edition. and that was the moment when I realized that this has to become a project. That this is going to be a long term um, study. Um, Really, I can't call it anything else because it doesn't answer any questions, you know, mm -hmm. it only proposes more and more. Um, yes, this is my son standing in our flooded garage in Miami Beach in the older building um, we were living in. Uh, and this is after Hurricane Irma, so it's the next day. And that's why he's wearing this bike helmet because, uh, so we took bikes out to just sort of see the damage. See what was happening. Yeah, happening. and the streets covered in sand, you know, starfish out on Collins Avenue. <laughs> that is shocking. It's quite surreal. It's quite it surreal. is, yes, uh, sort of. I, I suppose that in some ways that's uh, like any um, ocean community is always a little bit at the mercy of the the ocean and the natural world. You, you do feel that. I, I often have taken out, taken a plane out of uh, Miami International Airport and I'm always struck how low uh, the sandbar is basically that is Miami Beach and the sort of 60 and 80 story buildings that are now being built on top of it. It, it, it does seem like playing for time as it were. Absolutely, uh, you know, and the, and the expressions that I learned, the big one, right? There's the big one hurricane, there's sort of looming. I uh, mean, it could happen anytime. And speaking of landing in Miami International, so the project, um, it eventually resulted in this book I wanted to show. And there's one photo um, that is specifically illustrating landing in Miami International. Um, and this is part of the book project. You had your big first solo show at the University of South Florida Contemporary Art Museum this past year. Is that right? Yes. Um, yes. So this, um, I can't find a photo, but this is the book. Um, Published by Steidel, right? Uh, right uh, yes. uh, Interestingly, you know, German publisher. Interesting. <laughs> well, I was struck by what you were saying of um, that you were that not only were you viewing these in art context, but they sort of cross over into the documentary. And I could see why people writing news articles, for instance, would find your images extremely compelling because they are so vivid illustrations of what's happening, but they also do have that sort of evocative and you call it picturesque um, uh, quality to them that I think it's it's very interesting. They sort of straddle those uh, those two things. They are all um, metaphors, I think. You know, they're more allegorical than they are direct, um, like journalistic representations of- Reportage, yes, exactly. Yes, you know, and all the dramas associated. And I was not interested in that sort of genre um, because I think it's already, um, we can already sort of picture it in our minds, you know, from mm. polar bears on melting ice caps to flooded, you know, like muddy waters, house houses, roofs sticking out of those muddy waters. It's already so much um, a part of our um sort of collective memory just mm. for molded media images that we are again like bombarded with and mm. such and it's not like um we shouldn't be looking at more um but it's already becoming a bit uh redundant and what i'm worried about as an image maker um is this sort of desensitization 
of my mm -hmm. audience. You know, I don't want to hype up the drama. I want to show the everydayness and the current presence of, of climate change in our lives, you know, starting from here. And of course, this is impacting the entire world, right? But differently. But what I didn't want to do is to show climate change, right? Sea level rise, you know, the, again, all the adjacent issues at, at its sort of peak drama, which in our minds, in our psyche, uh, implies some sort of resolution, right? We will find resolution from that moment. And we do, you know, floods subside, but then they come back, you know? So I wanted to show the cyclical nature of things. And I found the photo, by the way, landing in, 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 the airport, in Miami International Airport. So this was actually done on an editorial assignment, which I do, I do love those. And um, I usually get relevant ones on the environment and there's a multitude of issues I'm interested and what are we looking at here this is is this so the this, Everglades is surrounded by yeah so we have mines here mm. we have Everglades here we have this notorious square lake you can actually even find it on you know online maps uh, satellite maps so there's this crazy looking square lake uh, with this sort of intensely turquoise water and it's a mystery as to what it is. Uh, there are new developments going all around. So I suspect this is cleared land for new developments, okay. which immediately gets flooded because <laughs> this is right near the Everglades. And you would think, oh, well this, you know, to me, it looked like this, um, you know, sort of artificial geometric form cutting right into the Everglades. Mm -hmm. And then there are layers to that already. Like there's already uh, an invasive uh, Melaleuca species of tree coming in all around <laughs> but it's interesting that shape and it's just sort of that will to dominate the land is mm -hmm. so uh, inherent in that in that yeah. kind of image i wanted to go back to something that you said that really piqued my interest which was thinking about your work as metaphor mm -hmm. and how you go about doing that on a practical level for instance is that is that a question of making an image more general as a rather a very specific place location. Knowing South Florida, I recognize images. Uh, for instance, Vizcaya, which is an Italianate-inspired um, palazzo, I guess, um, on the bay. Uh, and you have a wonderful image of that, of one of the sort of tea houses flooding in that area. But mm -hmm. if I did not know that location, I would probably almost certainly think that was Venice or um, you know another place that may be in Europe that's experiencing this kind of um, this massive uh, flooding problem. Okay. So is it is it a question is that kind of what brings out the metaphor is it a certain sort of universality or generalization of the image? Um, I hope so and they they sort of gravitate yeah this is the image you're referring to um, this guy so it's yeah. this guy. Yeah, this not even you know, this was before, again, I had this project in mind. Um, this is just gathering material for, for whatever. I was just shooting. Um, it's not hurricane, it's not nothing. You know, it was some just the daily, the daily floods of the, uh, of the area, yeah. Yeah, so I'm assuming this was high tide. And I didn't even know about high tides when I moved. You know, it's like I heard the term, but now we have king tides, what, four times a year. Yeah. And, I have and that was a term that, you know, I don't remember that seemed to appear in the popular ethos of South Florida maybe 10 years ago and did not really exist before that. I mean, I'm sure the phenomenon of the moon pulling on the tide existed, but certainly not something that would be talked about on a regular basis. Right, and now it became more than a nuisance for people, you know? Um, so there's an official list that, well, I know in my case, Miami, uh, Miami Beach government publishes four times mm -hmm. a year. There's a list of what streets to avoid and not to park your car. And really? instance, this is, yeah, this is again, not, none of this is planned. Most of my work, <laughs> there's very little planning that goes into it. Wow. Uh, so this is um, Miami Beach, Jefferson Avenue, and 17th. That's uh, amazing. And that is King Tide. And now there's a pump, which does help. So this is a couple of years. Or no, that, not even a couple of years, 2019. Um, and um, yeah, now there's a pump, which helps. But every time you know I'm walking around, residents often approach me with camera, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> 
a solo lady with a camera <laughs> while working on project flood zone and then let me tell you this story so everybody has a story to tell so that there's a resident of, of, of this house on the street who said well yeah my garage was floating the other year oh wow. it floated away and then yeah and then i we all know people who lost their cars right everybody can just replace a car and so on so it's definitely becoming a major in intrusion and disruption you're sort of comfortable and, and, and and is it i mean i wonder if it sort of is a bit like venice that people were are going to be up to a point willing to live with that disruption and intrusion for the beauties of miami beach or the beauties of you know a very warm january by the sea uh and that is you know worth uh, a lot a lot of um, and i'm trying to show exactly that too you know this is this is sort of the debate so there's like this incessant construction there are a lot of kind of meta images like mm. uh Gigiri, uh cardboard landscapes um one of my favorite photographers you know it's sort of a, it's a billboard image like there's always this construction going on and no no, no we'll be fine we're going to separate this dirty nasty water from our perfect pool and we will be fine <laughs> and so many floridians you know myself included love the place um yet this is my pool after hurricane irma and wow i was looking at that, that image on your website i was wondering about that uh, yeah. the uh, uh is that from is, is that just leaves that have blown in not um, they were chopped up from you know miami beach there's it's not so green actually you know so these yeah. were brought over from um quite far and uh the beauty of Florida. So the beauty, it's sort of um, like a, a taboo word in um, in photography, you know, and, and nostalgia. Mm -hmm. but there's definitely a bit of preemptive nostalgia in my work. And the pairings like that, you know, so no, we're going to camouflage and it's perfect. And it's yeah, keep the camouflage going. Keep the... Uh... And then this washed off... Um, so that so that is an interesting notion because I'm very interested in beauty and art. It's something that has uh, gone through a lot of a question I've looked at in a lot of exhibitions I've worked on over the years. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, to me, beauty is uh, you know something I'm very drawn to in art. I don't reject it the way I, I think a lot of curators perhaps do. Mm -hmm. Um, but to me, beauty, beauty can take any, you know, it certainly transcends prettiness or the postcard um, image, which I think your work very much does in that it is beautiful and has that kind of timelessness. Uh, but I don't think it's really infused with nostalgia so much. There's a kind of clear-eyed vision of the world. Uh, certainly, certainly. Yeah. and there's a bit of um, irony throughout the entire thing. To me, um, humor, is also a coping mechanism for sure. You know, this year it has been critical. I don't think yes, it's absolutely essential to the mission. Right? Um, yes. And even with a subject like climate change, um, the the work, you know, it, it you have to be alarmist, but at the same time, we're all living, you know, and, and it is a short life, but <laughs> we're trying to make things better. But speaking of beauty and with photography, especially and being aware of the medium, because I could have chosen other, um, uh, approach you know photography is not like it's not even my native thing so I wasn't trained as a photojournalist I came into it later on uh, even though I taught it for a while but then here Miami really opened up the possibility of this medium for me and it was because of its layeredness and complexity that it had this sort of um, because it, it all stems from Miami and Miami Beach, this project, and now it evolved into many more states and you know territories. Uh, and of course, this, um, Venice is on my list. Yes. I, was wondering about the, I was wondering about the light in Florida, because I always find that, particularly in the summer, that almost sort of blinding light uh, that sort of bleaches things out. And, uh, and with, heat and with, humidity, and heat and humidity, you know? So there's, <laughs> there's certain limitations. I'm only photographing really in the mornings, or in the afternoon when it subsides a little bit. Um, but the photography itself, you know, and light uh, in Florida, right? It's all intertwined. Florida has this seductive quality and so does photography. And I thought it was sort of a natural outcome for me, like something like this, you know, is it could be- um, What are we looking at? What are we looking at there? <laughs> it's a wall with mold, you know? So it's sort a of- 
a, I thought an abstract expressionist painting. The mold looks a bit like a forest, but it is yeah. mold growing out of. Uh, well, that's exactly what I thought. I thought they were sort of Italian cypress trees growing up against a wall. That's, uh, but, but that's an interesting relationship to the abstract expressionist. Now, how did you come into photography? I mean, how did you get started? What was the leap that you made uh, initially um, to go into photography? Yeah, well, photography, so my MFA was um, interdisciplinary, but lens-based. Mm -hmm. um, I did documentary, and then I started um, making those three-dimensional collages, and um, the series is called Landscape Sublime. Mm -hmm. So these were um, inspired by many things, um, in big part uh, by immediacy of image exchange in the era of, you know, internet. Uh, and social media. So those were user shared landscapes that no longer were uh, copyrighted that I would just sort of reconstitute. Um, and my background back from Russia is, is constructivist and sort of Bauhaus um, and very much three dimensional. So with all of that <laughs> coming into photography and here it was really just an impulse to observe and notice how these printed images you know create a sense of a different sort of parallel world and the way our memory operates you know we're so um like inundated with images right on a daily basis like you mm -hmm. don't even open an article if it's not illustrated <laughs> with an image usually and there's the association immediately and our brain um you know it just it seeks patterns all the time so when you see enough of these and there are plenty in the book too this is what your sort of mind imagines the place to be. So, you know, how like very simple example, celebrities, right? This is projected image. And then you have that person that's actual like human, you know, being living their life. And it's very different. Well, I mean, it's a little bit like an archetype or a metaphor, the way you were talking about your image, stri you know, striving that it, at one point it might be your neighborhood garage and another it becomes sort of a, a metaphor for a declining civilization or something yeah. like you know, yeah, it's a bit of that too it's a bit of that yeah and flood i thought of flood as sort of this mythological flood too uh, there's one very direct image that so the mythological flood as um as the society that's really ready for change mm. and might be too confused yet you know and it's not sinking in because it's um i don't remember who coined the term but it's called hyper object you know something that's so big that it's just difficult for us to contemplate and accept such as you know climate change for instance and how much of it already is present um this is my centuria chickens so it's chicken head bobbing in water of miami river and it's, again live and learn i've been encountering animal parts all throughout miami um, and there's a strong you know haitian cuban um presence in the city and the Santeria is one of the rituals of the religion. Right, 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 right. Um, um, though, and, I mean, animal sacrifice, yeah. yeah. So that- no, That does create almost that, I mean, that, that image sort of creates almost thing of like a, a new kind of aquatic being or that chickens <laughs> take into the sea of some, uh, yeah. in some way, shape or form. So, yeah, so for us, you know, for us, we might see this as something disgusting, even though right. we might not even be vegan or vegetarian. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's in Sandria that represents hope. And uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you talk about that the uh, series started in Miami Beach. Where sort of further flung in uh, around the state have you been going? I saw you had been photographing down in the Keys at, uh, at a certain point everywhere i have been everywhere at this point apart from pensacola i still haven't made it out there but that's on the list because out of this project grew a bigger survey on florida which is my current and current project and um they're both ongoing but the next book is going to be florida and that one uh represents wider scope of um issues and i think to me florida uh symbolizes sort of like a microcosm of contemporary America. Interesting. Well, it's been interesting you uh, posit it that way because I think in the rest of America, Florida has is very much seen as kind of the other or the distant or 
um, you know, the jokes about Florida man, or, you know, that this is a place where crazy things happen that might not happen in uh, the rest of the continental US. So it's interesting, uh, maybe some of the behaviors that are amped up you see as a, as a microcosm for the rest of the, uh, the country. But I think we Floridians know that it's just, I think it's sort of a, con to me, yes. it's sort of condensed America. Because, you know, who's looking? The New Yorkers? Are they the one judging? <laughs> and they are here. This is like Sixth Borough, right? We know that, too. Right. <laughs> uh, then there's Midwest, and I've lived there for seven years. And then West Coast, still wild. And then we have L.A. with its own. <laughs> As its own Sue Generous kind of uh, culture, uh, culture going on. Um, Yes, that's a, uh, it's an interesting place. I really, I, I'm uh, very attached to Florida. So it's interesting. Uh, I see the, the different shifts in the, um, the sort of rap rapacious development is, uh, is kind of amazing. And the, the state is also, I guess, very much a polyglot of people from all over the place. You know, there are, uh, uh, when I was growing up um, in Florida, uh, I remember I was the only, uh, child in my elementary school many years that had been born here uh that and i was a young uh, you know a young child because there are just this such this massive influx of uh population um yeah. and I, I do think that the there's the state has kind of a reputation of like second chances and the ability to start over again um perhaps if people come from other places where their lives have gone a little bit askew so that's an interesting idea of of second chances that right, it, you can sort of reinvent yourself. I think that's what it's known for, right? Yeah, very much, uh, very much so. But the difference, the degree to whether that's truth and whether that's myth, uh, I'm not sure. But I, I think it, it, it exerts a kind of a powerful pull on people. So, um, uh, so that's very interesting. So you said, when will the Florida book? Do you have a date when that's? Uh, do you have a goal for when that's going to be finished? Um, uh, well, it's the same publisher, so it's from a wonderful German publisher, Steidel, and that requires a trip to Germany. Yeah. So even, though, you know, but it's also like, how do you stop, how do you stop a project? So Flood Zone is ongoing, mm. and I have six exhibitions planned with Flood Zone this year. Some of it That's is- wonderful. <laughs> where, will, where will it be touring to? Uh, and it's not touring, so I'm inventing it every <laughs> time for each new institution. Well, oh, interestingly, really? One, two solos right now, gallery solos, uh, are in Amsterdam oh. and Madrid. Oh, wonderful. Very different. You know, well, Amsterdam can relate, mm. certainly, to the, you know, to the, the subject. Absolutely. Madrid, yeah. Yes, climate uh, change is affecting them very differently, but it's already certainly affecting, um, you know, the country and the region. And then after that, I have... Uh, well, Orlando, and then um, Philadelphia, uh, Virginia, and then eventually Miami. And all of those are solos with Flood Zone. So each time there's going to be a slightly different direction. Mm. And I keep adding material as well. So I think, you know, for like a non-art context, there's one museum, which I'm, I'm really excited about, that is actually not an art museum. <laughs> it's a, a history and anthropology. And so I was going to ask you, I would think there would be a strong pull towards natural history museums with yeah, your work. Yeah, uh, so. I'm excited about that too. And then uh, Florida came out of, you know, many, many trips shooting for Flood Zone, but then I wanted to open it up to other things, you know, this, and I was sort of following the tracks of this historic photographer, Walker Evans, who oh. has been shooting here for many decades, and that's his least known work, even though he's very much in the canon of photography, you know, and seen as mm -hmm. this monolithic figure. Um, but Florida's his least known work, so I revisited some of those locations. And then um, back when he was shooting, like in the 40s and 50s, Tallahassee was the the center of gravity and now it's certainly everything to south florida right and yeah. like central I mean, orlando um so exploring those things and you know urban development um certain tensions uh it's all i find and it are you going back to actual locales that you can identify from him uh i mean and, and trying to see how that has shifted since uh yeah. since he was Some there of that is that but very minimal it's predominantly sort of looking at how things have evolved and the state of Florida now and what it represents, you know, and mm. um, yeah, just uh, 
pre-elections driving through Central Florida, I was tweeting in Orlando and I was um, freaking out, you know, <laughs> to be honest. It was, yeah. it was intense. Uh, uh, yes, that's uh, yeah. a lot of, I mean, that, yes, the uh, idea of the, the state having been a swing state for so many years. and, and Exactly, what that. exactly. That's what fascinates me. It is sort of a place of very high tensions and contrasts, yes. you know, even within Miami. Yes, of course, of course. We saw, there are so many different sort of competing groups and uh, competing uh, agendas, and that's uh, that's a very interesting yeah. Uh, a thing as well and uh, since you've been here I mean you must have really seen the Miami art scene has completely uh, exploded and that's very exciting I mean I think probably uh that is it has made the Miami one of those sort of leading centers in the in the country for contemporary art so it, it's interesting that you can live in Miami and have a, a really significant career that I think maybe a generation ago it would have been much harder to do that um that, so yeah, good point. Um, I was sort of building it up, yeah. uh, but then interestingly, it's this work, the flood zone, and my views on Florida, and Miami, that can really took off internationally. I mean, most of my shows are um, elsewhere. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, well it, it, that's interesting. It sort of hit a nerve because it's such a sort of vivid example of uh, climate change and a sort of precarious area. And um, and what that represents to the uh, the rest of the world. So that's uh, that's a fascinating, yeah, um, yeah, fascinating that that has sort of took took is what took hold in the public's uh, in the public's consciousness. Yeah. Um, but but I wish you a wonderful uh, success with all of your upcoming shows, uh, yeah. and I hope that our public will come and see Alien Nations 2020. Uh, at the Coral Gables Museum. Um, you are in very good company with 23 other artists, all dealing with uh, some of the most difficult topics of the day. And I, I want to thank you. And uh, thank you for bringing such a kind of evocative beauty uh, to such a difficult topic. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.